Hey everyone, Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA here. Had another really great question come through the Enterprise DNA support forum. Um, so wanted to dive in uh, deeper to the scenario and show you how I actually solve it. Because I think this is actually quite, this is probably more common than, um, than you think when um, this sort of calculation would be really interesting. And so the member wanted to work out what was, what was the difference, what was the difference between uh, the between dates, right? The difference between, um, so let, let, let's use an example, the difference between each purchase someone makes, right? Um, so a customer might purchase many, many times or someone, so there might be um, something that happens many, many times in your data set and you wanna see the difference between the dates. How many days did it until it happened pre prior or in how many days did it happen after? Um, so, this calculation enables you to work out the difference between dates when the date is just in one column, okay? And so we spent a bit of time um, on this one working through a solution, but we can't, and uh, we had a bit of a, a misstep initially, um, but we ultimately got to the right solution, and, and I'll show you that one um, in a second. One thing is, and just as an aside here, that I think is a good thing to, to bring up is that really do like really ever do you need really complex calculations in power bi honestly like when i look at these things from members and i see really long formulas that look like this um you know i i, I just i honestly always go back and say look i never have to use personally formulas like this you just really ever do and so if you are using like or you do see these really complex formulas in your models um, you know, invariably you just don't need it. You know, you've got to think, uh, just take it back one step and think, okay, how can I simplify this? How can I utilize variables or measure branching, you know, to really simplify, um, you know, the, the logic in this formula. Okay, so let's have a look at the, let's have a look at the result here. Let's just have a look at the setup a little bit. Okay, so this is just a totally, I'll just, um, I created a totally demo um, data set, right? And so we have, a, we have our order ID, and so we have a customer when they purchased, and the quantity that they purchased, okay? All that really matters is this particular um, column here. That's all, all we're gonna work um, over, okay? Now, the one thing addition that we needed to make here to this particular table that didn't exist was a numeric index column, okay? Because we're going to work on, we're going to work through this column and some of the logic, and so it made it made the logic simpler than actually just utilizing this one column to run this calculation. Okay, so we want to we want to be able to put on any filter here by by say customer or any any filter, and we want to work out the because it could be location as well. We want to work out the difference between the last date that they purchased. Okay, so um, let's just have a quick look. Let's have a quick look. Well, you see here I've actually got a filter on location. Okay, so we've got, I've, I basically remade that table. I've said, okay, order ID, customer ID, when did that customer purchase in this specific location, and um, what was the difference in days between when they next purchased. So we have uh, a purchase date here, 28th of July, um, versus the last purchase that this customer made in this location, the 3rd of July is 25 days, and then they waited another 24 days, five days, 11 days, nine days, one day. Now, the um, other thing to note here is that say there were two purchases on one day, you see here, there was two purchases on one day, the second date or number here should be zero, okay, that's what we wanted, okay, this is what this particular member wanted, they wanted that to show the difference between the prior day, but then the next purchase to be zero because it was no different to the prior day. Okay, so there's a little bit of nuance here uh, to this particular measure, but that's what made it really interesting. And so you can see here, this is actually a dynamic calculation as well. And so you definitely do not want to place this inside of a calculated column. You want this to be totally dynamic. So you make any selection and it changes up for you. And this could be filtered in lots of different ways and this would still all uh, work absolutely fine. And you'll see here just for demonstration purposes, I put the index in here um, that enabled us to work out or to get this um, result here. We needed this index mainly for this particular result here. Okay, so let's have a look at what I've done here. Okay, so let's, let's so you see here I've, I've used a lot of variables which I highly recommend when you have a little bit more logic to think through. It's just so much easier to audit your numbers later on and also just understand the logic which is happening. 
okay? So you've got to remember that every result here is calculated individually, okay? So at every single result or row in this table, we need to go and work out, okay, what is all of these um, individual variables calculating, okay? And so let's just have a look at this particular one here, 7th of the 8th, 2016, the result is 12, okay? So there was 12 days between the last day of purchase, which was the 26th of July, okay? Now, on this particular result here, we first need to work out, okay, well, what index number do we have here, okay? What index number, in this particular case, is working out 430, and we work that out with a max. And then we say, what was the previous, what was the previous max index number, okay? So, so we're trying to identify here what was the previous highest index number. And we do that by calculating the same thing, max of index, but we change the context in which we calculate that. And we do that by using a filter, filter function inside of calculate. And here we're working out, okay, we wanna only look at, we only wanna look at dates or, or, or results in a table we only want to evaluate over any data which has an index number less than this index, right? So we're 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 creating where we are virtually working out this this number here, 290, by creating some different contexts in the calculate function there in the variable. Okay, then we need to work out okay, what is the current date? Okay, so we need to say, okay, well, what is the current date here? Seventh of the eighth. Um, 2016 then we need to work out the prior date and we can do that again because we've worked out what the prior index number was okay so we're working out go and bring me the last purchase date and but filter in that table uh, only the row which has the previous in index number so in this particular case the row which has an index number of 290 and then it's grabbing this 26th of July 2016 okay and then down here, what we're doing is we're just going, okay, well, what is the current date? So the current date is just a simple, I've, I've wrapped it in a value here just to make it, to just to turn it into a number. Um, but basically it's just telling me that the current date is the 7th of the 8th and then minus the prior date, which is the variable which we just worked out there. And then that's saying 7th of the 8th minus 26th of the 7th is 12 days difference. So can you see how I've utilized that index column to First of all, do an initial variable calc, but then I brought it into another variable here um, to then um, bring me this particular date. Okay, and uh, hopefully you can see how this is dynamic as well. So it, it obviously changes for every single um, row we have down here, and uh, and and recalculates you know depending on whatever context we apply to the report page, right? Now. The reason, uh, and the, just this other logic I have here, this other logic is basically just, if it's the very first one, what we wanna do is we wanna return, we wanna return zero. So if the index number is the min of all of the results in this context, that's why I use all selected instead of all, so it's the lowest in this particular context, then return a zero because they haven't purchased before off us, okay? Now let's let's try and find one where we have a zero here, okay? So you'll see here that this works well for this zero, you know, returning a zero if we have purchases on the same day. Now the reason why it works well is because of these index numbers, right? Because we are jumping back not by day, you know, we're not we're not doing a search by day, we're actually doing a search by index number. So we are always, so say something was on the very first day, it was on the same day, and we go and find the previous index number, and then we go current date minus prior date, it's always gonna equal zero because the current date is exactly the same as the prior date, and that's how we get the zero. So really interesting scenario, right? I really enjoyed working through, uh, working through this one, and I'm sure, I'm sure that this is gonna help some people out there because um, I do believe it's probably a little bit more common um, than um, that order would have originally thought, and certainly the member got um, you know, got got the correct answer, even though they started from a you know totally different place, right? Okay, so um, hopefully you enjoyed that one. Hopefully you got a lot out of it, uh, and um, if you did, throw the video a like. I really really appreciate when you do that. It certainly helps the channel and helps me um, get more content out to you. Uh, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV as well because lots of great content coming out, you know, lots of good tutorial videos, lots of events that you'll get notifications for, so really wanna 
and get you and uh, get those to you um, as soon as uh, as soon as they come out. Okay, take care. All the best. Speak to you soon.